What is up guys, it is Tony here, and I know it's been a long time since I've done a uh, montage editing tutorial. I'm actually recording a series of them today, so look out for those. But uh, today we are talking about one of the most important uh, things when it comes to Mac editing, Final Cut Pro, After Effects, iMovie, whatever you're using, and that is file types on, uh, you know, clips you're sent. Uh, the fact is, yeah, MP4 and MOV file types, like this file right here, uh, are really great and compatible for Mac, and you can make sure that your soft you're always recording with your uh, recording software like HDP VR Capture. You can always make sure that you are recording in an MP4 format, but unfortunately, you will not always be able to control what types of formats you get. If you are working as an editor who is taking in clips, whether you're editing skate footage, uh, snowboarding footage, wedding footage, or Call of Duty footage like I do, uh, you are going to constantly run into file types like AVI and W. UMV, which are Windows slash Universal formats that are very common, um, much sometimes much more common than MP4 since they do produce sometimes better qualities and a better bitrate performance. But uh, when it comes down to it, when you go into iMovie, for example, which I know is a very unprofessional app, but I just want to show you iMovie and how it reacts. When you go to import footage, you can see your AVI and WMV files are grayed out, but I can't import the uh, .mp4 file. Uh, if you go to Final Cut, which is a more professional program that I do tutorials on, when you try to import, you can import AVI, but AVI is extremely, extremely glitchy when it comes to uh, Final Cut Pro, and uh, it's much recommended to convert to MP4 MOV, and of course WMV cannot be imported at all. Uh, there's no way in, I, in Final Cut or uh, iMovie or standard uh, software on Macintosh that you can convert these files. You need to use a converter software. Uh, and when it comes down to it, there are tons of converter softwares. There's MacX Video Converter Pro, there's iSkySoft Media, there's Prism. There's lots of great software out there that cost $50, $100, $30, very, you know, varied prices. And when it comes down to it, a lot of that software is very, very... Um, unprofessional for someone who does edits like you know I do where I need to use Twixter and I need to use uh, optical flow and I need the the frame rate to be solid I need the uh, the resolution to be solid so when I produce these videos uh, my customers get the best quality possible and that's why I use video converter ultimate video converter ultimate is a great uh, conversion software I ran across I came across it rather uh, about a year ago or so um, and they recently released it to the Mac App Store you can actually find it in the Mac App Store now uh, which is on every single Mac I think 10.7 or 10.6 and up so basically Snow Leopard and up so you should have it if you have a newer Mac and if you don't you should still have it if it is an older operating system and once you open it up you have video audio or DVD you can convert all sorts of uh, formats and we'll go into video and basically all you do is let me see if I could move these over so you can see this better. All you have to do is you just basically drag the file in, the AVI file for example, um, and you basically can click this format here and this allows you to choose which format you want. You can go with of course uh, MP4, you can go with MOV and MPEG which are usually the three best formats for editing on Mac. Um, but you still can, if you are sending it to someone with Windows and they prefer AVI, you can send them uh, an AVI or WMV file if you want to convert MP4 to that. Uh, you can also use you know all these presets here, HD movie presets, and you can also do user defined, uh, which I'll get to in a second. So if I go ahead and choose, um, let's say, MP4, um, I can hit done, and I can basically hit export here and then hit start. And once it's exported, it'll actually show up. Um, on movies and then once you're in your movies folder you'll find video converter ultimate and then video converted and this is where your videos once they're converted will end up I'm not going to convert it because it does take a little bit of time um, and uh, if you want to edit the uh, format so say I'm using mp4 but I want to be very specific about what I want I can go into options here and I can uh, change the the resolution to 1080p for example if you're recording in 1080p you don't want to lose that quality uh, as you can see here there is no 60 FPS which is usually what you want you can actually manually type in 60 frames per second and it will convert it to 60 frames per second uh, most softwares that you'll find that convert video when you type in 60 frames per second it does not do 60 frames per second um, you can also turn up the quality, the bit rate all the way up to high quality. You don't want to compromise in any way. And you'll see it stays around the same uh, size that originally was 
um, you know, maybe it'll double it, but that's mostly because you're trying to uh, really get the best quality possible, which is important. But 28 megabytes is nowhere near unreasonable. You can also do this, uh, as I've said, with uh, WMV. You take in WMV files, and you can go ahead and you can change this up. Now, when you have a custom, let me uh, get rid of this one. When you have a custom uh, format that you want to work with, like this one we just set up right now, or actually let's change it again. Uh, 60 FPS. Oops, spacebar is not working. Uh, okay, and 1080p. We can go ahead, hit OK, and we can hit Customize, and we can name it. So we can name this um, Modern Warfare. Well, we'll just put COD Clips. I know I capitalized L there, but uh, you know you can put in COD Clips. You can hit Done. And uh, every time you go into here, say the, you know for some reason the uh, quality has changed, you just click here and you go to user defined, and you can see all my user defines here. This is for movies. I keep it at 24 frames per second. It's usually what you want for a movie, like you know any typical movie like the Avengers. And uh, max quality is mostly for my clips, which is basically uh, you can see here 1080p, 60 frames per second. And of course, uh, if we go back to the qual the one we just made, COD clips. Uh, you'll see that it does stay with 1080p, 60 frames per second. So even though there is no preset quality here that has 60 frames per second, you can user define your own and save them, which is very great. Um, the other thing is, uh, say I have a bunch of clips in here. Obviously, these are all very similar clips uh, in terms of name. But let's say when I import these ones, they end up being, uh, let's say, they just decide to say, do you want to convert these to AVI? I'm just trying to show you the features here so you guys know how to use the program efficiently. Um, when you have loads of clips in here, let's just say you have like a huge amount of like maybe 50 clips for a montage. If you want to be able to, um, you know, go ahead and apply the uh, the settings to all of the clips that you have for this one, as in my uh, COD clips format, you go to apply to current setting to all files. And all files will have the same setting. I thought you guys just want to know that because some people do work with fif upwards of 50 clips and uh, it is very difficult to have to go in one by one and change the quality over and over. Anyway, uh, these, uh, th you know, the, the quality that this uh, video converter pr produces is very, very nice. The only downside to the, uh, the overall quality is that when you have such high quality, unfortunately the file sizes do get quite big. Uh, 28 megabytes, like I said, is pretty big, uh, and it adds up over time. Like if you have, let's say, 50 files, like I said earlier, that's um, upwards of 1.5 gigabytes. And uh, if you don't have a lot of space on your hard drive, it could be a pain in the ass. But at the end of the day, it's worth it. It gives you the best quality, and it is really good for uh, converting files. It's probably the best method on Mac uh, to date that I've seen. So let's get out of the program real quick. I'm um, basically going to show you where you can find it. Uh, go to the Mac App Store. And you can see it is $49.99. It's a little expensive in the Mac App Store, but when it comes down to it, it's definitely worth it. If you do uh, charge for edits and you want, you know, you charge for edits and you want people to uh, get the best quality possible, you'll probably make your money back quickly. Um, and obviously, there are ways around this. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I'm not going to show you guys how to do any of that, but there are ways around the price where you can get it somehow for free. I'm not going to, you know, I'm just acknowledging it's possible. And uh, of course, you have to have 10.6.6, uh, 10 .6, which is Snow Leopard. So there you go. Uh, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you guys uh, a very important factor in uh, montage editing, and that is converting files so they are compatible with your editing programs. And uh, if you guys found this video uh, useful at all or helpful, uh, go ahead and like the video and subscribe for more tutorials. And if you have any questions regarding this video that I did not explain your uh, your problem, then go ahead comment below. I, I'll try to help you as best to my ability, and possibly I'll do a video on the problem you're having. And if you do have a suggestion for future videos in this series, uh, for a tutorial on how to do a certain type of effect I use, of course, comment below and tell me that. But uh, more videos will be coming soon. That is pretty much it. I am Tony, and I'll see you guys next time.